My name is Cliff Muncy, and uh, I'm a representative of Forsyth County for the North Carolina American Republic. And I went into court today with a friend, Jerry, and he's here on the phone with me. And we just want to talk about our day because it was really long. Isn't that right, Jerry? Yeah, it was a very long day. <laughs> very long day. I sat in the courtroom from 9 until almost 5 o'clock, and then they pushed it off another month because uh, the assistant district attorney said he didn't have time to get into it, and he had somewhere that he had to be later on that evening. You were in Yatkin, uh, Yatkin County District Court, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was a really full courtroom. I mean, I think I counted, I was counting the the uh, the seats, and I counted maybe like 150 people or so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me, first of all, what, are, what were you in there for? Why were you going to court? Uh, <laughs> Well, I was driving home from work. After getting off of work, I was coming home, and on my exit, uh, right off the ramp, as soon as I got off the highway here close to my house, they had a license check set up. And I did not use a, a license because I do not recognize the jurisdiction of the current state calling itself North Carolina. And also, my uh, tag was expired on my vehicle, and the electronic inspection was out, which I didn't know since they've switched all this stuff around. So, uh... Anyway, when I went through the license check, you know, they asked to see my North Carolina driver's license, and I handed on my North Carolina Republic ID. They got pretty upset about it that I wasn't, <laughs> that I didn't have one of their driver's licenses. And so, so you don't have one of their driver's licenses? It's at my house. I just leave it there, put it that way, so that way I could, I could get a ticket and go into court and challenge the jurisdiction of this this state calling itself North Carolina. I actually do have one, but. I'm letting it expire. You know, it takes a while for those things to run out. Wow. So you can actually still drive without a driver's license. Like, you you remember how to use the wheel and everything, right? <laughs> yeah, I can get in and start it up and hit the gas pedal and go down the road <laughs> <laughs> without having to have a license and tell me how to do it. Who would have thought? The charges are a criminal charge. And in a criminal act, there has to be a party injured. You know, I'm not hurting anybody by not having a license and a registration and inspection on my vehicle. And, you know, I'm very well capable of driving. I've been doing it for quite a while. <laughs> what did the cops say when you handed him your your ID card? <laughs> well, it, it was a younger, uh, younger state trooper there that first came up to the window. And when I handed it to him, he looked at it and he said, oh, I'm... This is a North Carolina driver's license. He's like, I need to see your driver's license. And I told him that that's what I use, that there's a jurisdictional issue, and uh, I do not recognize the current state that's put into place. He uh, called over another guy, and this state trooper came over and just started yelling. You know, I mean, he was being very rude. And He was actually yelling at you. Yeah, he, he was yelling, yeah. And uh, just for my own protection, because I've heard of... I've heard of different stories and have witnessed stuff, uh, videos and stuff myself. I went ahead and called Cliff here and had him record the conversation, and the state trooper totally changed his tone of voice when I told him I was recording the whole conversation. What was he? I mean, what was he yelling at you for? Uh, <laughs> the fact that I, I didn't give him a, a North Carolina driver's license. He was pretty upset about that. That I that I handed him a an ID card, and according to him, it, that ID card didn't mean anything. Saying, I need your valid North Carolina driver's ID right now. Very demanding. And uh, anyway, that's, that's when I recorded a conversation. And, uh, you know, he changed the tone of his voice and said, hey, could, well, could you just pull over here off in the grass for a minute? I'm going to, uh, I'll be right back. So I said, yeah, I'll pull over here for a minute. So I pulled over, he went and ran everything, and came back and gave me three tickets for those three different three different charges that they see as a violation. So so you got three different charges, and so that was why you were in court today. You don't recognize the state of North Carolina as it is now. The current state, yes, correct. It's the 39th state that was created um, from the Reconstruction Acts uh, out of military force. So right now there's two states currently operating, calling it themselves North Carolina. There's the original 12th state that I claim citizenship to, and then the 39th state that was created from those Reconstruction Acts, which were illegally put into place, and it was not voted in by the consent of the people, so therefore the chain of custody over the soil 
has been broken, it's clear to me that they're illegally put into place. Reconstruction, um, that happened, of course, in 1867 and 1868. Yes. I mean, a lot of people would look at that and be like, well, why in the world is he fighting Reconstruction? I mean, that was just right after the Civil War. And, of course, you know, what what does that have to do with anything today? What is the problem you're trying to solve here? From the Reconstruction Acts and the passage of the 14th Amendment, there are several problems that's linked to that 14th Amendment, and it really changed the uh, structure of the government. Before, it was the individual told the states, you know, what to do, their representatives. The representatives worked closely with with the people who voted them in office, and then they went up to D.C., you know, for just a few months out of the year, really. Um, they didn't live up there, have houses up there, and they didn't have pensions that are paid for for the rest of their life after only being there for four years, different things like that. So it, it's just a complete flip of the, the whole structure of this country that took place during these Reconstruction Acts. Everybody's running around with like chickens with their heads cut off, yeah. to coin a phrase. There's a lot of people out there that love Ron Paul, and I love Ron Paul too. I mean, if, if it weren't for Ron Paul, I, I wouldn't have started um, studying myself in a, in a lot of these issues. But, I mean, there's all of these modern-day issues that people are trying to fight, and, and they're all, in order to get your rights back, you first have to get a politician in office to, to get your rights back. You know, our rights are inherent. They're from God. Yeah. Our rights are inherent, and we know that, and it's in all of our founding documentation. And we're all for the Constitution, but when it comes to actually, oh, I have a right to travel, Okay, well, even if you discover that, it's like, oh, okay, well, we, we need to vote people in office in order to get that right back. You know, obviously, that's not what you're thinking in today. I mean, showing up into court, you, you think that you should find out what your right is and know what constitutional law is and just ignore the other the unconstitutional laws. Exactly. I mean, if, if voting, I mean, look, just, okay, look at, for example, look at this country for like the last 150 years since Reconstruction. I mean, have we gotten better or have we gotten worse by... You know, each, every two years and every four years, going and voting people into office that we think is going to change things, and then, you know, they go up there and strip away more of our rights and our freedoms. I do not vote in the system because the system that's here has been put into place through military force, so they no longer represent me. It's it's a whole other ball game for people to start thinking. Oh yeah, we the people are the ones that put the government into place, and it says in the Declaration of Independence that they have the right to alter or abolish their current form of government, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't go in like most people go into court. You have a special way of doing this, right? I mean, like you said, most people go in there and they just pay the fees and so on and so forth. Now, how, what what makes what do you do differently than than all the other people that are going in? We go in and, and dress respectfully, first off, so that way, you know, there's a good impression we are good, upstanding citizens. And then we file paperwork, letting them know, hey, we're coming in here on special appearance. We're not coming in, you know, claiming that you have jurisdiction. We're coming in to challenge that jurisdiction. So we file the paperwork up front, letting them know that we're making a special appearance to challenge the jurisdiction. And with our memorandum of law, we have about 30 pages long. It's a list of the evidence, and it's overwhelming evidence. And and by jurisdiction, you're not talking about the police officer was in a different county or a different state or something that he shouldn't have been in. Uh, The jurisdiction you're talking about is sort of a power over the soil of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you have a lawyer? No, no. Lawyers licensed by the bar, which is the state... So, I mean, they're in, you know, you would think that they would be in your favor, but if they're licensed by the state, who would they really serve? Tell me a little bit about your, your case prior to this, because you had one in in Forsyth County, right? Yeah, Forsyth County last year, it was similar to this. I mean, it was, uh, you know, failure to produce a driver's license. I got pulled over because they saw a little sticker on the back of my license plate was, Expired. Gave them my North Carolina Republic ID. You know, it wasn't their valid North Carolina driver's license. So uh, they gave me two tickets for that. I went to court on three different occasions with court reporters coming in because district court is not a court of record. So I hired a court reporter to 
record everything that was going on to protect myself. Went in three different times uh, last year for Side County, and they finally ended up dismissing it after they saw that we wouldn't back down. This today was actually my second time in Yadkin County. When I went in the first time in Yadkin County, they held me there for four and a half hours. Went in today, was there eight hours, I guess, the full day, and then uh, said that they didn't have time to get into it, so pushed it off to January 11th. It, it, it gets to be expensive going in, but I mean, we have to stick up for our rights and our freedoms because, you know, if our parents and our grandparents had done this, it wouldn't be as hard on us to go in and fight this now. You, you mentioned there's a, there's a thing that just went through the Senate just recently. Speaking of our rights, wow. uh, <laughs> uh, it was just passed. Get into this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, if they think that you are a domestic terrorist, they do not have to have a warrant to come come to your house. They can arrest you without a warrant and lock you up indefinitely without trial. So it's very scary to think about. Um, I mean, there's several other things. You go back to the Patriot Act and several other bills. I mean, it's just they're all building upon each other. Well, Jerry, thanks for talking with me about this. Every time I go into court, I think, man, it, it would be awesome if we had like 150 people show up to these court cases. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. You have that many people. I mean, even 25 people showing up, you know, it would be intimidating to them. They have an obligation. That ADA has an obligation to respond to these um, to this evidence. I think it's a very foreign thing to most people to say that it's not a good th- not that it's not preferable to be a U.S. citizen. A lot of people they don't realize that before Reconstruction we weren't U.S. citizens. We were citizens, each citizens of our state. We had sovereign states, and we were and we were citizens within those states. We were citizens of those states, and then and Washington was very limited in its power. The federal government was under the states, and the states told them what to do. So you're going to be in court January 11th? Yeah, yeah, and then there's some gun shows coming up here soon where people can come find out more information, correct? Yeah, they can go to ncrepublic.org and also americasremedy.com, and both of those sites have a calendar on there, and it looks like we've got a, we've got a Raleigh gun, uh, a gun show in Raleigh. We'll, be, we'll have a booth there, and it'll be December 17th and 18th, and we are also, we may have a booth in Winston-Salem, and I don't think that's... Uh, totally nailed down yet, but um, I think we're on the waiting list for the booth in Winston-Salem, January 7th and 8th. Uh, and then we're having meet, a meeting January 14th in Winston-Salem. So for the people right around this area, the triad area, we've got a lot going on. So, yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Jerry. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, it's been fun. Jerry, I'll, uh, I'll let you go, and we'll see you next time. All right, Cliff. Thank you very much, man. Take care.